Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I will show you how you can get the not common items from two arrays in Power Ultimate. There are actually two ways to do this and I will show you both of them. I have made two simple arrays, array 1 and array 2, with different items in it. You can see this one has the items apples, bananas, oranges, lemons, grapes and kiwis. And array 2 has apples, peaches, oranges, strawberries, grapes, and blueberries. If you compare these two, you can see there are some common items and some that are only available in one array or the other one. And of course, we want now in this exercise only the items that are not common in either array 1 or array 2. And um, I want to show you how you can get all of these in a final array. I will click here on new step and first make a new variable. So we initialize a variable and we name this array free. I can also rename this uh, action here and this will be also at the type array. Let's start with method one. First, I click here on new step and go here to control and say apply to each. And um, now we'll take the first array and add an action because we'll check all the items in the first array. And we add a condition here again under control and condition. And now we need to check it against the second array. So in here we put the second array and our condition is that it does not contain and the value is the current item. So this is the current item of the first array. And we check is the current item not in the second array. If it is not in the second array, then we want to add it to array three. Here, if yes, in this branch, we said add an action and we type in here array. So we say, so we use this action append to array variable. And then we choose which array to append to, of course, array free, because that is our final array. And the value will be again, the current item. And now we'll test this whole thing say manually, we run flow, done, and now we check it. Here we can see each item of this array and how the condition turned out and, and what action uh, was taken. Here it says the first item in array one was apple. And of course, apples are also found in array two. Here it's false and it didn't add to array three. And the second item in that case was bananas and bananas are not part of array two. This condition turned out true and we can see it added here bananas to array three. And if we look at all the other ones here again, this condition was false, so it didn't add anything. The next one was the lemons, it added to array three again, and so on. Now we checked everything from array one in array two, but we also need to check uh, what's from array two in array one. Uh, that's when we need to make another apply to each action, but reverse. So we go back to edit, 
we minimize this action, say again, new step. In control, we say apply to each. And in this case, we select array two, add an action, go to condition, and now it's reverse. We check array one, and it should not contain the current item. Here you have to be careful uh, because in that case, it's the apply to each two action uh, because we're in this one and not in the previous one apply to each. Uh, select this one. And here we add action again. Append to array variable. Again, we want to use our array free. And again, it should input the current item of apply to each two. And what we're also going to do is we will show the final array in, um, in a compose. So we add a new step and we say compose. We use the compose action and here just display the array free. Then we'll see uh, on one glance what it filled in the array free. So we test this. We go again manually, run flow, and done. Let's see what the compose put out. We got bananas, lemons, kiwis, peaches, strawberries, blueberries. That worked really fine because if we compare these two, we see that bananas are not in array two, peaches are not in array one and vice versa and, you know, and so on. So it really worked that we got now all the non-common items in one extra array. But there is one problem with this. With these small arrays, you might not notice it, but you can see each of these apply functions or actions, it's two seconds what they use. And here are also two seconds. And these are just six items each. That's not really a lot. And I can tell you from experience, if you have a lot of uh, items to compare, let's say thousands, this can take up to 30 minutes or even longer to run. And if you have a workflow that's kind of time critical, uh, that's not really a good option to do it. Now that I've showed you method one, I will show you method two. In order for method two to work, you have to be a little bit familiar with the functions in Power Automate and also with OData queries. But I will just show you how to do it. We first create a new step here and also use the compose action again. And the first thing that I will do is to unionize the two arrays. Here I go to expression and say union. And uh, first I'll need the, the first array. The first array is a variable that's called array one. And and the second one is, of course, array two. Two, yep. Okay. What does this do? It will combine these two arrays and it will only display the distinct items of the two arrays. Because as you know, we have some double entries like here are apples and there are apples. And we don't want to have these two items uh, double in this array, but I'll show you. Let's go on here to test in and run flow.
if we look here at the output, you'll see we have apples, bananas, oranges, lemons, grapes, and no double entry. So we have one nice and clean array to work with. Go back to edit. And now we have a good array to work with. I will add a new step. And now I will say filter because we want to filter now this new array. And which array to filter? In that case, it's the outputs from my compose to action. You can rename this, of course, to make it a little bit more distinct what is what. And now we get a little bit to the tricky part because in the regular filter array, you could choose here the value and uh, see if the outcome is, is true. But uh, in our case, that will not do it. We go here, edit in advanced mode. And we'll delete this one here. Now we have to create a data query that really only selects the items that are either in one array or the other one, but not in both. For this, I will show it to you in a simple text editor how to do it. The text editor in Power Automate is a bit clunky and sometimes it's not really taking the what, what you're typing in. So it's better to do it outside in an editor and uh, then simply uh, copy and paste it. What we need here is an at or. I open the bracket and um, I'll make a new line here. And I'll write not contains variables array one item and not contains variables array two item. What does this query do? It checks if the item of our current output is not in array one or if one of the items in, in our current output is not in array two. If one of these conditions is true, then it will add it to the output, to the new output. So I will copy this and post it in here. And now we can test it. Run flow, done. And you can really see this applied to each took two seconds. This one here took seven seconds. That's already a lot. And if we look at this function here, we get banana, lemons, kiwis, peaches, strawberries, and blueberries. The exact same what we got here from our first method, but with zero seconds or maybe a few milliseconds. And that's so much faster. Um, and especially with large arrays, you will have a much bigger advantage using the second method and the first method. It needs a bit more understanding of the functions and expressions and, and the queries, but it will give you uh, such a better performance. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope I could teach you something. I wish you a really great day. And if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments.